Uh, I want to talk about these two trees here that we pruned earlier about a month ago to a precise level. We're going to focus on managing honeycrisp this year. Uh, our goal is to try to get the right crop load on honeycrisp and then manage repeat bloom so that we come back with a full crop next year. Most honeycrisp blocks have a really excellent bloom this year, especially those that had light crop last year. So we've been suggesting that you do a specific targeted pruning to a particular flower bud load. And that's what we did here about a month ago. We came back to the same two trees now to talk about them again. These two trees are both pruned to about 144 flower buds. That is 1.8 times our target which is 80 fruits on these wonderful tall spindle trees. Now we're at pink and we've counted them again and we were very close to the 144 fruit target. As you go forward through this pink to bloom period, there is still an opportunity to adjust bud numbers through pruning if you've ended up with way too many flowers. I've told many growers, wait till pink to prune. And then you can, or at least come back at pink and readjust bud numbers. So if you found yourself in a situation where you have three or four times as many flower buds as you need for your target, there's still time to go do some bud adjustment. I would like to focus on a couple of things, what we did on this tree to get down to 144. These two trees had substantially greater numbers. And one thing we did was take out big branches like this one here. We also took out more medium sized branches where needed. But when we still had too many flower buds, we ended up cutting off individual spurs. And here are two examples where we took off small diameter wood and there's others up in here just to get down to the proper bud number. But you can see on this tree, many of the spurs uh, on individual branches were not pruned because we were fairly close to the 144 and just needed to remove a few more. Now we're at early pink on many of the clusters and getting close to full pink on others. I'd like to focus on this sort of pink here where we have visible pink, but if you look at some other clusters, there's almost no visible pink yet such as these. <clears throat> I wanted to have this meeting at pink to just talk forward about what to do at bloom. Now we would love to do some blossom thinning on these honeycrisp trees if there is no frost damage, but that's a big if. As we've looked around and particularly the extension team, they found a lot of flower clusters that are damaged on many varieties, especially early varieties. So far, there's not a lot of damage on honeycrisp because it's a little bit later but in some blocks there is some damage to king flowers on honeycrisp so before i talk about blossom thinning i just want to make this caution again this may not be the year for blossom thinning but if you do have a full complement of flower buds and you have a heavy bloom if you don't blossom thin you will probably be disappointed in the crop load next year. But it's a really touchy situation right now, especially considering the frost predicted for this evening. So I want to emphasize that when we get close to bloom and the first flower is open, we have to make an assessment at that point about flower damage. How many kings are damaged and how many laterals are damaged. Now, for example, our colleagues that are working with me in the Hudson Valley have made that assessment. They're right now in bloom. And I made the judgment there are too many kings damaged. So we have abandoned blossom thinning in the Hudson Valley. But still in Western New York, it's an open question. If we get to bloom and you have almost all of the flower, the king flowers still alive, say 80% plus, and you've pruned to this precision pruning level, I would suggest we still blossom thin. Now let me walk through that process. When we get about 80 flowers open on this tree, that's when we wanna start the clock and use the pollen tube growth model 
to calculate when our first spray of blossom thinner should go on. Once we have 80 flowers open, we begin the clock, and it's usually about one and a half to two days after that that we will want to put our first spray on. Now, there's only one legal product to use in New York, and that's ammonium thiol sulfate. The other good product, lime sulfur with oil, is not does not have a legal label in New York for use during bloom. Hence, I don't recommend it, although it's a very good product. So this year we're recommending 2.5% ammonium thiol sulfate or ATS. That's two and a half gallons per hundred, and it's just spray 100 gallons to the acre. Now that would go on when the pollen tube growth model progresses to 60% of the pollen length uh, completed. We're suggesting this year 60% and not the 100% because our experience with ATS is not as good of a blossom thinner as lime sulfur and oil. So let's assume that um, 80 flowers open on a Monday and you start the clock and then by about Wednesday, you're at the 60%, you would go out and spray your first spray of ATS at two and a half percent. On that day, the clock restarts and you then start calculating warm temperatures again until we get out to 60% again and you would spray the second ATS spray. Now, usually only two ATS sprays are needed. They're sometimes separated by about three to five days. And the first one is generally two to two and a half days after you get the first 80 flowers open. I really hope that this year would be an excellent year to do this on a wide scale, and it still might be for Honeycrisp. However, the damage that we've seen leads us to say it's a very block specific decision. From what I've seen west of Rochester, there's more damage. And so we have to wait a little more to just determine on Honeycrisp how much damage there will be, but for, if your block has essentially 80% of the king flower still healthy and you pruned to have at least 1.8 or two times the number of flower clusters, you should blossom thin. Now that also assumes that at bloom time, we're not in the middle of a frosty period. That complicates it again. But we'll come back with more recommendations as we get closer to bloom on Honeycrisp. I want to just comment just briefly about this issue on these particular trees. 144 flower clusters results if every fruit set in that cluster, five fruits in a cluster, that we'd have 700 fruits on this tree. We only need 80. So it's about 10% of those flower clusters we need to set. And I wanna emphasize that point. If every one of those 700 fruitlets stays on the tree for two or three weeks until we can thin them off with the post bloom thinners, the seeds in those 700 fruits make so much gibberellin that they inhibit the flowering for next year. But if during bloom, we can knock off out of those 700, say 600 or 500, so that we're down to less than 200 fruits on the tree, the seeds in those 200 fruits won't inhibit the flowering on the entire tree. And that's the whole point. So this helps you understand how you could judge your block based on damage. Let's go to two examples. If in this tree, when we get close to bloom, we judge that almost all the kings are damaged, so 80% are damaged, and some of the laterals are damaged, we might not be beginning the season with 700 potential flowers. We might be beginning only with 300 flowers. Therefore, bloom thinning is not so essential. We would want to skip bloom thinning. In contrast, if we get to bloom and we still think that maybe 80% of the kings are alive and almost all the laterals and we're starting with 600 fruits, we would still want to blossom thin because 600 fruits each with 10 seeds producing gibberellin is way too much gibberellin and it inhibits flowering of this variety almost every time. So this is a difficult year, but one in which you should 
evaluate every block and determine the live number of kings, the live number of laterals, plus the count of the total amount on the tree. And if you're way over, let's plan on some blossom thinning with ATS. Okay, that's our message for today. Um, Mario, do you wanna add anything to this? Let me just say that uh, I think in no other variety except Fuji, I would say is similar, is blossom thinning so essential. So for many of the other varieties, given this year and the frost that's out there, I think we should avoid blossom thinning. However, both Honeycrisp and Fuji will disappoint us next year as we turn bloom if we didn't blossom thin when we should have. And that decision has to be made as we get closer to bloom. 